So what happens when businesses fail to support creativity and innovation? Well, we see this all the time. A hot tech startup goes public. Five years later, the company's market share is shrinking and the stock is a fraction of what it was. So what happened? Well, in some cases, the company got too big or too clumsy to be agile. Or the mad genius founders cashed out and left because everyone's so busy making sure we meet those quarterly earnings expectations, there's no time for us to create anything new. Or the risk of failure is just too great. If this sounds familiar to you, let's explore how we can continue to foster creativity and innovation as we grow. First, let's challenge all the assumptions we're making about what is possible or not possible. Assumptions are typically old stories or fears masquerading as truth. When we challenge these old stories and old assumptions, we're free to create new realities. A good question to pose is, what assumptions must be challenged so that we can boldly move forward? We also want to create clear rules for innovation. The famed X division of Alphabet, Google's parent company, has a three-step process for innovation. Number one, ask the important question. Number two, create a radical solution. And number three, a feasible path to get there. The most important thing is to create a safe space for failure. So as you consider the degree to which your organization fosters creativity and innovation, I invite yourself to ask the question, to what degree do we tolerate failure in the course of achieving success? If your tolerance is low, say a four or less in a scale of one to 10, ask yourself, what's the sphere around failure? What is the perceived risk around failure? If the risk of failure is losing your job or your status, you're not a culture of innovation. Many successful products like 3M's Post-it Notes, WD-40, Bubble Wrap, have all been attributed to failed experiments. These companies, these companies simply repurposed their failures and created legacy products. So how can we make failure fun? I once suggested to a client that he invite his team to share their epic fail each week with their teammates as an invitation to laugh and learn. If we laugh at our mistakes, they cease to be scary. Highly functioning teams are built on shared success and shared failure. Make it failure a cause for celebration. If you really want to nurture creativity and innovation, take opportunities to repurpose failure, laugh about failures, and appreciate where your failures have taken you. As you create new initiatives, make failure an anticipated outcome. Normalize failure as the cost of doing business because it is.